Hey, what's up? Zach King here with a Motion 4 tutorial for Icy Text. Now, I gotta give credit to Patrick Sheffield who actually came up with this technique, but I want to show you how to do this effect in Motion 4 in video format. This video is brought to you by EditorsKeys.com. Check out their website. Some of their customers actually include BBC, Universal, and MTV. They sell everything from like recording equipment to keyboard covers. They've got it all, so check it out. So the first thing we're going to do, I've got a regular project set up in Motion 4. My settings here, i am just got it on DVC Pro HD 1080 project. You can do this in any size you want. I'm going to go ahead and go to my generators, and we're going to grab just the clouds, and we're going to hit apply, and that'll be set here. And then we're going to go to the inspector, and we can do this in the HUD too, but I'm going to show you the numbers in the inspector. If you go to your horizontal scale, we're going to adjust both the horizontal and vertical to 20. And also, we're going to set the speed down to zero. Also, you've got these layers down here, layer strength. Well, the second layer strength, go ahead and set that to 0.34. And then hit the fourth layer strength to 0.5. Now we're going to go ahead and add some text here. You can hit the T key or just hit the symbol up here. I'm going to type in ice. We're going to pull the size all the way up as big as we can. Also, Hold down shift while you open up the size here a little bit more. Center that guy. Let's make the alignment centered as well. Turn on snapping, snapping by hitting shift. And we've got our Arial black font. And we're going to go ahead and add a filter here. Now the first filter we're going to add is up here in distortion, bump map. So now we're going to go over to the inspector, go to filters, and we can actually change the direction here to negative 30 and then the amount can go to point 21 enter okay so now what we're going to do is open up the layers tab command 4 we're going to drag the cloud into the image well you're going to see that's what happened to our text so now let's go to our library and we're going to go down to our generators tab once again and we're going to go to gradient and so here's the gradient, and we can drag this right over the ice text, it's still in the base group, and we're going to see this wacky color. Well, we can go to the inspector, go to the generator, and we're going to go down to gradient. And we're actually just going to change these numbers here. You don't have to follow me exactly, but here's the numbers that I have for you. 0 0.05, green is 0 0.15, and then blue we're going to change to 0 0.35. We're going to match those exact colors here in the second image well. 0 0.05, 0 0.15, and then 0.35. So those should be the exact same colors. Now three quarters way th through the gradient we're going to add another well and we're going to change it to the following numbers. 0 0.1, green is going to be 0 0.31, and then blue is going to be 0 0.53. So there's your icy blue gradient. You can go up and save this. I've already done that but if you hit save gradient you can name it what you want. I've already got one called Ice Blue. You're going to see here. So the next step is to click in here and deselect everything and go up to this plus sign. This is going to create a new group here. We're going to click here and call it Ice Back, like the background. Okay, so we've got our base and the background. And what we're going to do is we're going to go on the clouds layer. We're going to hit K which is actually going to clone this layer and we're going to drag this into the folder here, the new groove that we've created. It's not aligned, you can line it up if you want, it's not super important as long as it's over the text that you have which is down here. Now what we're going to do is select our group and we're going to hit Command Shift M and this creates an image mask and you're going to see if your HUD is open you have a mask source well, an empty well also, if you have your inspector here in the image mask tab, you're going to see the same thing. You can drag your ice text into there. Okay, so let's select our ice back group one more time. And let's go to the blend mode and we're going to make this hard light right here. Now let's pull down the opacity down to around 50%. And we're going to add a filter here. So let's go up to add filter, stylize, and we're going to go to extrude. So in the extrude numbers, let's change our angle to 265. 
Let's change our distance to 11. And our back size to 0.97. And extrude style to gradient. Okay, now let's add one more filter. And we're going to go ahead and go up to stylize. And we're going to go down to indent. Now here's a lot of numbers, but let's go ahead. Stay with me. We're going to go to the inspector to make these exact here. Let's make the softness 0.45, brightness is going to be 0.85, ambient is going to go to 0.25, highlight brightness, let's move that up to 29, and light rotation, we're going to go to 60, and depth, we're going to go to 20. Okay, let's select our ice back layer here. And we're going to hit the K key, and you remember that does the clone layer. Okay, so you're going to see we've got a clone here, and what we're going to do is name this one Ice Front. Ice Front. Okay, now what we're going to do is change the blend mode to overlay. Opacity to 40%. Now we're going to go to Add Filter, Sharpen, Unsharpen Mask kind of a contradiction. And add filter, we're going to add one more under color correction and this is a gradient colorize. And the only thing we're going to change here is the repeat. And we're going to move the repeat up to about 9 or 10. I'm going to go with 9. Close these up here. Command select both of these. We're going to hit shift command G which is um, adding them all in a group. And we're going to name this one ice layer and then I'm gonna go ahead and clone this by hitting K and so we've got this wacky thing now going on but this is okay what we're gonna do this is okay so what we're gonna do is call this reflection go ahead and name that reflection and pull this down below ice layer because it's gonna need to be behind it and what we're gonna do is open it up go to clone layer 4 we're gonna move the rotation of Y and Z it's gonna be 180 and 180. And so now it's upside down. We just need to pull this down. Line it up. About right here. Now one thing's bothering me. I'm going to go ahead and open up. I'm going to move ice front actually behind. Now the cool thing about a clone layer is it's actually affecting the reflection as well as you can see. I want to make it more, a little bit cleaner look. Okay, so now that I've adjusted the ice front, we're good to go. And I'm going to add one last thing for the reflection here. We're going to go up to Add Filter. We're going to go to Blur, and we're going to go to Gradient Blur. And I'm going to change 0.1. You're going to see it's up here. I'm going to add it to the top of the reflection. And then 0.2. Make sure this is at the bottom so it gets clear and then blurry and so there's the cool effect we can go ahead and adjust everything if we put these two in a group we can command select this again shift command G and we've got a new group and we can actually adjust the position of all this and the size and shift select and I'm going to lower the size so we're affecting everything here and there's your icy effect. So you're probably not going to even use that in real application. You know, this is a good way just to get to know a lot of the other filters within Motion 4, and I hope that helped you out. And you get more comfortable with the workflow and how the group and layers work, and also cloning was a big part of this tutorial. Also, check out the Facebook page of EditorsKeys.com because they brought you this video today. Check out their website for a lot of cool products that I know you editors are going to love. I'm Zach King with FinalCutKing.com, and I'll see you next week.